Hello everyone, and welcome to my first how to Minecraft. Well, in this episode we're gonna look at the Swedish architecture. But before we go into how to build such building and what's on the inside, I first want to give you some more information. Because as we all know, Sweden is kind of famous for their red houses with a black roof and the white pillars and windows. But I went into more information about why that is. And the first thing I want to talk about is why the houses are actually red. So one of the reasons why the houses are red is because there was a mine and where they used, well, they used to mine lots of copper. And a byproduct of that uh, copper mining was some kind of red dye. So the copper waste, what they did with that is they mixed it with some kind of very cheap type of paint. Because back when those houses were first made, Sweden was not that well off. So they, they used to mix their copper waste with their paint and that's what gave them these red colors. And beside that, it was also very easy to maintain because since the paint was so cheap and it was just an abundance of copper waste, they could do that with themselves as well. They could paint their houses themselves, which is very useful as you know like Sweden is very big country, but the population density is rather low, so it's useful that you can do it yourself. And what also is very popular is the, uh, well, normally the, the roofs are black, but I decided to go for some more kind of nether rack. And I, well, you could use blackstone, but a deep slate, I mean, and I'll take blackstone as well. But I went with the net rack instead. So why is the roof black, right? So with the use of a black roof, there's less money contribute towards heating and overall energy. So it's more of an isolation kind of thing that it's black. It says that you could also use copper roofing, but I'm pretty sure copper roofing is a lot more expensive than using uh, black wood or black stone. So on to how to build such a building. So for the foundation I used uh, dripstone in this case, but pretty much any brown block can work, even the composter can work, it's just whatever you prefer. For the walls I used uh, mangrove planks in combination for with crimson planks, but more on the top in the shadows as you can see over here. Use some more in the shadows. And you could also use acacia planks, but I'm not sure how I feel about that. I also didn't use them. Because it's, I don't know, it, the orange look always oh, so strange to me. Casey is one of my least favorite root types just because of the almost ugly orange. For the pillars, you could use any white block. So, in this case, I used uh, white concrete. But I'm pretty sure you could also use snow. I didn't put snow in here, but snow also works. Uh, well, if you use it in a snowy area. And. You could use polished diorite, it's, it's cheaper. You can find a lot of diorite, and uh, diorite is an ugly block, I know that. But it somewhat works in this build. You can also use quartz, but that's also quite a burn to get lots of. Thing as the walls, you can use whatever you want. Uh, I use diorite in this case. You can use uh, quartz as well. And that's pretty much it. Um, what you see over here is quite annoying, right? Like the, the little gap in the wall. There's a quick fix for this, but that's only available if you have commands. And that's the debug stick, and I actually didn't de destroy my button. So, one button later, and we got the debug stick. What you want to do is, you want to click on this wall until it says low. So, in this case, it's north. When it says low, you, you right click and put it to top. That way, it connects towards the stairs on the top, and you no longer have that little gap over there. If you don't mind the gap, then uh, it's fine. You can just leave it at this. Or if you don't have commands, it's the same thing, right? Then, next up is the roof. Well, basically, the roof is, as I said, it's just stairs, right? Just stairs, stairs, stairs. But I also use the white outline because it looks nicer, and it's also the same thing in real life. For this thing, is also the same thing with the debug stick. I don't think you can do it without the debug stick, but if you don't have commands, don't worry, you can just use normal stairs. If you want to 
you need to deep explicit for that. It's, it's quite simple as well. You just keep clicking it until it says shape. Once it's shape, you right click until you got the wanted position. There you go. Idea that. This is just the normal stairs. You can, as I said before, you can use whatever. You can use deep slate. You can use, uh, I think it's that blackstone stairs as well, right? Yeah, you can use blackstone. You can use netherrack. It's up to you, whatever. Um, I also use this here for more of like an outline. Some houses in Sweden have that. I don't know exactly why they have that, but it looks nice in overall. Same thing as this. More like a connector of this part of the house with the uh, horizontal part of the house. For the chimney, I used uh, the normal bricks. You don't really want to use wood for a chimney because it's, it's very flammable. I uh, used blackstone on top to give that more scorched outlook. And I used glass in a gradient matter for the smoke. Next, we have the entrance. The example I used had a, a wooden, well, a green wooden entrance. But you can use the normal mangrove planks. I use bamboo because we don't have any other green planks. Alright, I went inside the house. Well, I did my research on the interior and most of it was just, you know, wood. And they used a lot of green planks as well, which I don't really like that much, but <laughs> it looks okay, right? It looks okay. But again, since there's no green planks, I use bamboo as a Substitutes, I guess. It looks decent enough, like, it looks like wood. So, uh, I did my research on Swedish interior design from more traditional houses, but I haven't really found that much of it, other than the traditional cabin look. But I'm pretty sure that the cabin look is more inside the wooden cabins. So, instead, I did somewhat my own thing, I made it a little bit more modern. But you're free to do whatever, obviously. The television there with speakers, a little reading corner here with books, lamppost. And then I went over here in the kitchen, which is a lovely small kitchen with the green again and a stove baking some meat, which is probably burned by now. And I used the, uh, the new decorated pots for feeding bowls for a dog or a cat. And these are very strange looking seats, but they work as seats. You go up like you normally do, and they're not in the way. So I like that. I actually do really like that. For the lightning inside the house, you can use all kinds of different hidden lamps. There you go. I fixed it. <laughs> right, so you can use hidden lamps inside walls, because these are double walls, as you can see. There's always double walls, so you can use a different type of wall pattern on each side. So if you want to use wood or stone here instead of the uh, concrete, you can do whatever, really. So that's also very useful for lightning. Same thing over here, I use some hidden lights under the carpet. And over here, I use some candles and a hidden light in this, the stove over here. If you're not that big into interior design and just want like a big open space for all your items, that's fine. It looks very tiny from this side, right? But if you go towards this side, I actually kept it empty so you can see how much room you actually have. And this is all with the double walls. Next, we have the basement, which I have not done anything for. You can do whatever you want over here. You can have your item sorter, you can have your little dungeon over here. It really doesn't matter, but it's just like a small option to have. And it's nice and easy and it looks clean from the inside. Not really nice or And you go upstairs. I went with two bedrooms, like one for a boy and one for a girl. This is a boy's bedroom. And I put a little computer down here. If you want to know how I did all this, right? The, the, the clothes on the floor and the mouse pad. The mouse, more like. You, it's the same thing as before, there's a command for that. And the command is this. So it gives you an item frame which is invisible. So once you, I forgot to put the button on that. Once you do that, you get an item frame. And you can just play it wherever, right? You can play it here. You don't see it. But once you put an item over there, it's basically a, a minified version of that item. Which is great for small decorations like this. And then over here we have the, the girls' room. And the same thing over here with the item frames, the little heart shapes and everything. Same with the wardrobe. And here's the desk over here with the book. 
So basically the same thing, but a little bit different. So here we have a reading corner, the books on the floor with the same tactic as with the uh, item frame with the books. It looks a little bit cozy, right? Looks a bit cozy. And then the curtains, the closed curtain and open curtain. I prefer the open curtain because closed one, I don't know, it's like a little spacing, it's really annoying for me. But if you don't mind that, you can close them as well. Whatever you like. Then next we have the attic. You literally can do whatever you want over here. If you want to have redstone in your house, right? If you want to have some, for example, over here, just in time, turns night. Or no, it started snowing. So you no longer have the sun. So the lights turn on in the house. You can turn all of that over here. Okay, as you can see down here. I put a triple wall down. Here we go. So if you want redstone, for example, you can let them from it come from the roof all the way down there and just do whatever you want with it. The attic is really free, you will do whatever you want. You can make an entire room from this, or you can use it for storage, or you know, just do whatever you want with it. Next up, I decided to leave one room open again. And as you can see, it's plenty of room for all the shenanigans you want to do with it. And that's about it, I think, yeah. That's a quick tour around the house. Uh, I know it's pretty, well it's not that big, but if you're just starting on a server, it's, it's a little bit too big to start on. So uh, next I'm gonna use some more of budget material to make a smaller house, and I'm gonna do a time lapse.
All right, there you have it. It's a small, simple house. It's a little bit more work than I anticipated, but I don't think I've done anything impossible for a new player. The two wood types you will need though is uh, the spruce type, the spruce wood type, which is very easy to get if you look around. I mean, there's all these spruce here, and I reckon you guys are probably gonna build it in a snow type bag, so you can also use snow instead of uh, white concrete for the pillars. It doesn't look too odd in my opinion, it looks great. And then of course diorite for the windows, but, and as I said before, if you look over here, the little gap over here, if you, if you have uh, access to command you can use the debug stick and just debug stick it away. Um, other than that, uh, you saw me like being a little bit concerned about the front porch because I really don't, didn't know how to get it well. I'm not that happy about it, but it doesn't look too bad in my opinion. It could be better, but I really couldn't find how. So I hope you guys can like find something that works better for you, but it's not that terrible. Use a trapdoor for more decoration. I was considering buttons as well, but yeah, didn't really do it for me. Then use the stairs over here for more decoration in the house as well. I did the same method in this house as well. If you come over here, you can see that I use all these stairs over here. Again, if you have a debug stick, you can actually make it even better by doing the facing a little bit differently. Right, so what I meant was, uh, you can do the shape, right? Do it more like this. That way, it's still white from the inside and it doesn't directly go towards the, the wood type or whatever you're using for the ceiling or for the, uh, the flooring. But if you don't do that, then don't worry, like as I said, doesn't really bother me too much that you can't see the, the flooring of your second floor over here. Then from the roof, again, it's a deep slate, not that expensive to get. You just have to dig down and get a little bit more of mining session going on. It's not that hard to get. Uh, the birch wood can be whatever. I mean, if you you can also use spruce wood, it's, it's fine. I, I just prefer the birch because it's lighter. It complements the other white parts more. It's spruce works just as fine. The inside, same thing, it's just a little... It's not that spacious, but you can leave with all your stuff here. You can go down in the other house and get a uh, basement going. Same on the roof, you can do whatever with it. I prefer the birch wood again, because it's lighter and it complements the more dark area of the stuff. You can use carpets and use this wood as a foundation pillar and use some lanterns and use some hidden lighting over here as well with the torches and the carpet as you saw and yeah that's pretty much it if you have any questions or if you have any recommendations on what i could change or what i can do next i'm planning on doing a series of like all kinds of countries and their traditional or their more knowing houses so if you like that idea please feel free to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next episode Bye!